Okay, let me just do a quick check. All right, perfect. Um, <clears throat> honor and a privilege to be here to share some of our activities. And as you saw earlier, also super eager uh, to share uh, what we're up to as well. Uh, can I just make a quick thank you to some of the mentions um, that were made earlier uh, today for, for some of the work we're doing in Williamson? Um, we're really um, humbled and uh, extremely um, privileged with some of the partnerships that we have and how committed uh, some of our partners are on, on what we're doing. I also want to make a, a quick shout out to Christina for the mic drop moment. And I, and I don't mean the actual mic drop. Uh, I mean the point that you raised about um, the challenge of safety and, and skilling of seafarers. Uh, being, a, being an ex-seafarer myself, I think it's, a, it's an extremely important element. Um, so my name is Nakul Malhotra. I look after uh, our emerging opportunities portfolio uh, within the maritime services segment. Um, but I'm speaking today on behalf of my colleagues in, in New Energy. Um, and I did mention that we're going to share some of the activities. Um, the Williamson Group, and I think many of you will have uh, sort of different perspectives of the Williamson Group. We're fairly diverse, uh, fairly wide, um, 161 years now. Um, and really, uh, the reason I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the sort of core business uh, and the network of it is it really forms the basis of some of our activities towards, uh, let's say, the energy infrastructure and the offshore wind and so on and so forth. Um, present in over 60 countries, in some way, shape, or form, our products and services are touching about 50% of the international seagoing fleet. Um, and of course, uh, 50,000 employees and represented in just over 2,000 ports. And so, you know, from a network perspective, it gives us a great foundation to be able to build on uh, some of the activities that we're doing. As I mentioned, I'm, I'm domiciled in the maritime services piece. Um, and what I'm not going to talk about today is our 3D printing venture, our activities in drones, um, some of the stuff we're doing in hull cleaning. All of that resides in the maritime services piece. I'm going to pick um, a couple of examples um, within the new energy space, uh, which I think is, is kind of exciting because it's a combination of this innovation pipeline. But I heard some of the timelines uh, in some of the presentations earlier, and um, and picking up from what uh, I think Bernd said earlier is, you know, some of these timelines were sitting in sort of the 2030s, um, but there is activity out there to really fast track, and I want to give you an example of that. Okay, so so really, um, the new energy segment within Williamson was created um, as a consequence of uh, lots of different activities we were doing, but it it, it isn't really arbitrary. Um, uh, the, the, um, the segment really went into sort of a lot of different alternatives and elements and really landed on uh, kind of the offshore wind piece, which I'll share a little bit more about, and kind of the zero emission, this ambition towards zero emission shipping, right? And coming uh, from where we come from, uh, that kind of makes, makes a lot of sense. But then there was also, uh, in order to achieve that, there was a real um, important requirement. Sorry, I'm just going to ask one thing. Okay, there's a there's a sign here that says no operation for the next four hours. Um, okay, okay, um, but anyways, we went in we went in these specific verticals and and really landed on uh, on on the few that we're focusing on. But more importantly, what we recognized was you know there are also going to be extremely important decarbonization activities, but our capabilities and our network and our expertise may not be best suited for those. And I think the choices of what you don't do are as important as the choices of what you do do. You do? Yeah. Um, so really, um, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a Steve Jobs quote here. Um, really, it's, it was a lot about creating a lot of dots safe in the knowledge that they will connect. And I know that it's really easy sometimes to sort of see Williamson invests here and Dorsey invests there and now there's Reach and then there's um, Edda Wind and so on and so forth. But I think, you know, when you sort of look at this picture, you start to see um, that the goal really is, yes, of course, we want to do, you know, low emission, no emission shipping. Uh, and it's sort of, it's this network that we start to see of how it interlinks um, and, and one contributes to the other. And we start to recognize some of, obviously, the economies, but also the competencies that, that come across. From the offshore wind perspective, um, so Ventir is a collaboration with Parkwind. Um, and, and, of course, at the moment, we don't have any decommissioning activities, you know, largely because of, you know, it's still new. Um, um, but 
uh, Ventura is a collaboration together with Parkwind, and that's really around, you know, kind of the development of the actual wind farms, um, and then right through all the way to operations and maintenance. And, and I think, like I said, a, a shout out to the partners because, um, you know, this, this, this challenge, this space, this, this requirement is so huge um, that, that it's absolutely impossible to be able to do it in um, ivory towers and pretend like we know the answers to everything. And so those partnerships are super important. But the partnerships are predicated on, on sort of our expertise as well. So Elevon, for example, is a partnership between North Sea, uh, which has a lot of um, uh, land assets and capabilities with managing uh, the traditional oil and gas yards, but together with abnormal load services around the logistics of, of those blades. Um, and North Sea itself, of course, a huge uh, asset base in, uh, off the Norwegian coast. And then you're looking at Edda Wind and Reach, which is really supporting that entire operations and maintenance piece. And then the question arises, you know, how do you, you, know, you, you can sort of say, all right, um, this is an, uh, a, a value chain that somebody else has to solve. And I think from a Williamson perspective, I think the challenge that my colleagues in New Energy took was really, okay, this is an energy transition piece. How could we bring some expertise? How do we kind of fast track or, or participate in that energy transition? Uh, from a North Sea perspective, and this, is, this comes from um, um, the infrastructure uh, element of it. So traditional, or let's say more traditional, oil and gas bases, yards, um, actually have this phenomenal capability of being in the right place for the infrastructure requirements of tomorrow, whether that's offshore wind farms, or indeed, whether it is to support uh, low carbon, no carbon bunkering. And, and I think one of the dates that I wanted to challenge or at least be really proud about uh, that my colleagues are working on to really fast track is the availability of green ammonia. So I think, I think in September, Yara actually announced that they have an ambition to be able to supply uh, green ammonia for bunkering off the Norwegian coast by 2024. And so we've actually got a partnership um, with Yara in order to be able to do that uh, from our North Sea basis. So, so we're, we're looking at multiple locations and we're looking at the provision of, of green ammonia being available uh, by 2024. And I think, you know, th this comes back to this sort of optimism, right? That, you know, we're an industry uh, that traditionally innovates on the back of regulation. I think where we are right now, we're at the cusp which of such an exciting time because we're at the cusp of actually innovating faster than the regulation. And I have absolute hopes and confidence in our ability to fast track a lot of the established timelines simply because of the focus uh, that is being uh, that is being given. But more importantly, large problems attract talent and capital. And talent and capital, when you bring smart people with money together, they come up with super creative solutions. And that's really the optimism that I reside with. And, and I've got to do that, right? I'm, I'm looking after emerging opportunities. Otherwise, it wouldn't be sensible. But really, this, this ultimate goal, and I think this is a, this is a kind of a different approach. And uh, this is Topeka. And as I said, I'm only taking a snapshot of a couple of different initiatives, um, is really to be able to move towards this low emission, zero emission type vessels. And I'm doing low emission as a qualifier for the next slide. The real ambition is zero emission, of course. Uh, and, and I think there are two different approaches. And I think what makes Topega different is, one is you sort of get the ships um, and, and you focus on those, uh, the design solutions and so on and so forth um, to some degree irrespective of the specific cargo maybe, and, and you sort of look at it in a more general basis. Um, but then the other way to do it, and this is what really where, where to, uh, Topeka is really focused on, is really trying to take a look at it to solve ultimately uh, the cargo owner's challenges, right? Um, and really where, where Williamson and my colleagues are working on is really to be able to connect all of those different dots, uh, just because of that prevalence of that network and, and the capabilities and the competence that we have and, and some phenomenal partners that, that we have as well. Um, so really trying to connect those, um, uh, the cargo owners, the, the energy carriers, and, and access to that green capital that results in the ultimate design. And it isn't one fuel type, because I, I don't think you can. I think that's really going to be a choice based on the specific trade route and the specific cargo, because that's really what, what's going to be able to fast track that process. Um, and so, uh, and so this, is, this is an example of a, of a partnership with um, North Sea Container Line. Um, carrying uh, quite a lot of Elkem cargo, so shout out there over there with, uh, to Elkem as well. Um, but but um, and really, this is between 
uh, Central Europe and the Norwegian coast, um, uh, you know, containerized cargo. Um, and we're starting with methanol. Um, but this is, you know, specifically designed in answer to a particular cargo challenge and a trade route challenge. And I think that approach and that route, um, it's painful, to be honest, because it's very, very specific and, and scalability is, you know, not overnight. But I think the more we can do that and the more use cases you get, the more replicability you can as well. Uh, because I think fundamentally, and with zero minutes and zero seconds to go, um, I think uh, fundamentally, um, you know, the more examples you can have, the likelihood of replicability increases tremendously. Um, but we've got to have some really good examples really quick. Um, so just summarizing, um, just a couple of really small examples, um, trying to do different things in fast tracking and, and um, you know, highlight Williamson's participation in not only trying to figure out what, what fuel to use on the ships, but actually participate and maybe contribute towards a wider energy transition uh, conundrum. And as I said, I haven't talked about the autonomous vessel in Must Masterly, haven't talked about the digital stuff in Roll Labs. Um, ultimately, there's a lot of activities, there's a lot of capabilities. I like to categorize decarbonization into three really simple buckets, pre-combustion, combustion, and post-combustion. And I think, you know, different timelines for different things, but ultimately, um, on the route to solving the pre-combustion choices, which is fuel, we've got to be able to do a heck of a lot of the other stuff as well. Thank you very much.